of schooling and parents and careers. You know, we're in right now, we're in an age where there's so many different offbeat careers coming up. As YouTubers, we get this question all the time. You know, uh, how did you talk to your parents about it? How do we convince our parents about this really new career that we have? I want to ask you, you know, if you had to convince your parents and tell them that this is what you, or what, how did that discussion go? Did that happen where you had to sit them down and tell them that this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? I want to do YouTube now. Like, did that, did that happen with you too? <laughs> doing YouTube right now. Uh, you do YouTube. Yes, <laughs> well, uh, not everybody can be convinced about everything, okay? Some things are just done. So, just to give you an example, when I, when I uh, passed my twelfth standard, at that time it was called PUC. After that I decided I will educate myself, I don't want to go to college. This is a family where everybody is educated, not going to college is like sacrilege. At least today there is a little more uh, flexibility. Those days it's like if you don't go to college, you're finished because now probably if you don't go to college, you may lose your lifestyle, but you won't lose your life. That was a generation, if you don't go to college, you lost your life, you on the street, that's about it. So they were terrified of this. My father being a physician, he was just freaked about it <laughs> He is a very studious man, all his life, first, second, third, in everything that he has done. So he couldn't believe this, that I want to educate myself. So I did one thing, and because of this suddenly everybody thought I've become some kind of an enemy and uh, they were not even talking to me properly. I did one thing, I was a… <laughs> just to tell you, I was such a big eater, I would eat ten times, eat more… at least ten times of what I eat today, but I never was putting on weight or anything but it's because my level of physical activity was such. Uh, I could just run up a coconut tree, I was made like that <laughs> So, I was every day cycling about fifty, sixty kilometers, swimming in the Kaveri and going back like this, so eating this. I decided to go to the, my city university library. Every day when they opened at nine, I went, eight in the evening they closed. That entire time I sat there, read all kinds of stuff, from Homer, to popular mechanics, to National Geographic, to literature, to geography, this, that, whatever. Whatever came my way, every day for one year I read like this, just all kinds of things. But the most important thing for me was, though I was such a huge eater at that time, this one year I went without a meal. Morning I ate as much as I could, breakfast at home and I went there and sat there the entire day without a meal, which was a huge achievement for me because without food I could stay. This kind of expanded my way of looking at life, but uh, you know, family drama started, my mother started crying, when the next academic year comes, go to college, go to college, go to college, then I said, if I must go to college, I'll go for literature. My father said, what will you do reading poetry? You must become a doctor, he has seat ready for me in the medi you know, military, medi medical college, everything. I said, no. Then they said, uh, okay, at least do engineering. Then I said, see <laughs> Please do engineering <laughs> If I say I don't want to be a doctor, if you told me become a veterinary doctor, Ayurvedic doctor, at least a witch doctor, <laughs> I would look at it. If I say no doctor, you say engineer. I'm not going to listen to this, your problem is society, your problem is not me. So I just went for literature and these three years, I went there in the beginning and they all had ready-made notes, the teachers, they would read and everybody writing down. Those days fountain pens, kara 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 kara, it makes noise, it just irritated me. I said, I don't want to listen to this kara kara noise, I gave them a suggestion. If you give that notes wherever you got it, we will photocopy it and give it back to you. We don't have to come, you don't have to come. <laughs> then it… you know, if I'm there, I'll ask hundred questions. So they didn't like it, then I made a deal with all the teachers that they'll give me attendance. That was my only concern. So once a month I just… once a month I went to college just to check if they're keeping their part of the deal. 
My life is so similar, yeah. So I explored the geography of Mysore district in such a way, every village track, every hill that is there, every little bird nest, whatever is there, everything I paid attention, paid attention, just wandering aimlessly. But today, like when I went for the rally for reverse board where all the top experts are there, some questions came up and I just telling them casually, they said, Sadhguru, how do you know all this? I said, what… what was aimless wandering? Where I paid absolute attention to everything, from a worm to an insect to anything and everything I paid attention, now it's become formidable knowledge. I never intended to learn anything, I just paid attention because it was life. And this is all it takes. We have come here to live. There is no other damn purpose. Those of them who want to go to heaven can go today. Why are they postponing? <laughs> if it's such a great place, I don't see why you should postpone it, isn't it so? <laughs> this is very important for the youth. If anybody says there is a better place than this earth, it is a crime. It's because of that we have destroyed so many things here.